Hello everybody, this is Stringing Him Back 4, round 3 for Group E, probably the most exciting group we've seen so far in this tournament. Now, let's have a look at our matchups for this session, shall we? At first, we have got winless, pointless Arctic Warriors taking a crack at the draw specialist Aaron Plays. Then we will see our bronze medalist last from last year, Man, taking a crack at Jurassic Expert. Then we see Prismbo going up against 2 0 MEJP10. And as for our main event, we have Keonti going up against Kaijon Cooper. Now, without further ado, let's kick off our first match. Right, in the red corner for Arctic Warriors, we've got Kentrosaurus, and oh my god. <laughs> oh dear. And I say oh dear because this is the meadow field, and Aaron Plays is going to have terrain advantage and going to get the first hit in this match. Oh, and he'll have type advantage over this Kentrosaurus as well, because in the blue corner for Aaron Plays, we've got Mutthaburrosaurus. Man, Arctic Warriors really can't catch a break in this tournament. <laughs> Oh, bless them. Look, it's been a difficult start. You know, getting 3 0 in the first match is never what you want to see, and then another underwhelming showing in round two. They just have to get, for me, I do feel they need something out of this match. You know, a losing bonus point just to get off the mark. Because I, I think four wins will probably get you through the group stage. Three with a couple of bonus points, and oh my god, look at that. So yeah, massive match for Arctic Warriors if they want to get out this group. I mean, uh, in, at least in Aaron Play's case, they got the two draws. You know, they got the two points on the board. But, you know, again, they kind of need the win as well to keep pace from the top. And this is a very good start from Aaron Play so far. Please give Arctic Warriors a hit. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but this is just plonk ridiculous. This Kentrosaurus hasn't landed a shot in this entire tournament. I don't even think it's had a hit in this tournament. Alright, coming in next for Arctic Warriors, we got Mega Raptor. Now, it does have type advantage over Metaborosaurus, and it does hit really hard. So a couple of hits, Arctic Warriors will be back in this match. But knowing that, like, Mutthaburrosaurus is probably going to put Aaron Place 2-0 up. <laughs> uh. Mercy is for the weak. Right, come on, Mega You can do it. Nope, oh, nope, oh, here comes another hit from Mutthaburrosaurus. <laughs> I mean, this is not even a joke. This is just plong ridiculous. Here's another hit. Here comes Metal Wing. I think this guy's Hunter type, so this will do a bit more damage. Oh, maybe not. Oh, this is going to be rock, probably. <laughs> this random number generator just hates you, okay? It hates Arctic Warriors. <laughs> I don't know why. The random number generator is truly a mysterious mistress. Oh, there's a hit! Mega Raptor finally gets a hit. It's a hurricane beat. So it's going to be a massive hit from Arctic Warriors. Mega Raptor finally getting on the board here. Oh, wow. Loads of damage done. And here, type advantage. Okay, it's a tie. Ooh, a crit! So Arctic Warriors is not going to be 2 0 down. Right, they've had a slow start, but they're finally getting hits in this match. Mutthaburrosaurus is going down. Come on, let's not lose hope for him yet. Right, coming in next for Aaron Plays, we've got Ankylosaurus. And Aaron Plays watching this is probably thinking that the whole world's against him, is not. I just feel bad for Arctic Warriors because they've had such a tough tournament. You know, I, I feel that way about everyone. I want everyone to at least get one win in, a tour in my tournaments. Which is, which is the main reason why I do group stages. I think I'm the only one that does a group stage. 
format, but I do it because, like, you, you work so hard to put a team together and then it loses the first match and then that's it, and oh my god, it's a soundtrack. You know what I mean? I mean, take Arctic Warriors, for example. They lost 3-0 in the first match. They are, they are like one hit. That was it. Right. Down goes Mega Raptor, but hey, it at least killed the Mutabarasaurus. Right, coming in food for Arctic Warriors, we got Super Mimus. Now, this Super Mimus has done some stuff. Good sign things. And it has got some good hits in the tournament so far. But, well, it's going to have to pull off a miracle here. With Spy Tech in the wings as well for Aaron Plays. I very highly doubt that this is going to end in a draw. Not when he gets a crept. And an Earth Barrier to boot. Ooh, okay. Now, I can't remember if these moves ignore the Earth Barrier. I don't think they do, but I could be wrong here. And it's a Neptune stream. Here we go. <laughs> At least I got that right. Splashies. Whee! Bonk. Big hit from Arctic Warriors. And it does ignore the Earth Barrier. And in fact, it completely removes it. So that was a good hit there from Arctic Warriors. Ooh. Hang on. Another hit. Let's go, Arctic. Let's go. <laughs> you, know, I, you know I'm saying this now. Imagine if they actually win the tournament. Which is very much possible. Because, you know, even if they lose this match, they could win the next four. Get up the group and then win the tournament. You just never know. Well, Anki's going down. Right, coming in third for Aaron Plays, we've got Spiny Tector. Well, Arctic Warriors has managed to cut down Aaron Plays' lead. But can Aaron Plays finish the job with Spiny? I swear, if this ends in a draw again, then I'm just going to give Aaron Plays another four draws if this ends in a draw. It's another tie. Oh, the Super Mimus is getting checked. Ooh, hello. Another Neptune stream. And that, in fact, is going to guarantee Arctic Warriors at least a losing bonus point. So, hey, at least you're getting off the mark in this tournament. And like I said earlier... You only really need three wins and a couple of bonus points to, in theory, get out of a group, out of these groups. So, any bonus points are definitely welcome. Yes, they need to win. But look at this! All of a sudden! Okay, it's a tie. Oh! An Arctic Warriors! Finally gets the victory! And I think we're all stunned. The Suka Miner stunning Aaron plays. And Arctic Warriors finally getting that win. And well, if anyone deserved a break in this tournament, it is them. They get the victory in this match. Well, the uh, draw streak ends at two. But yep, this match definitely belonged to Arctic Warriors. Right, on to match number two. Right then, in the red corner, representing Marn, we got Soro Faganax. Marn 2-0 so far in this tournament, looking good again. And I have to say, been really impressed with this Soro Faganax. It was very effective against Arctic Warriors in round two. And I'm sure it'll do its work in this matchup as well. But in the blue corner for Jurassic Experts, we have got Ampelosaurus. Actually... I want to hear everyone's opinions on Ampelosaurus. Do you prefer 
the arcade design, which is this one, or do you prefer the DS version of Amplosaurus, where its back spikes are grey, and its head is different for some reason? Pop comment down below. I only ask because I've been playing the uh, DS game again lately, and I forgot that, and, and I was reminded that the Amplosaurus looks very different. If I gotta be honest, I kind of prefer the DS one, but I prefer the uh, arcade head. Well, that's a good hot shot from the arcade Amplosaurus. All right. Oh, there's a tie recovery there. Hmm, a slow start from Man so far. Another hit from Amplosaurus. I think I just jinxed this Sorrow Fragonac saying it was going to do well. Oh, maybe not. Man finally getting their first hit of the match there. Not much of a hit, but a hit nonetheless. Another tie. Ooh, but it is. Oh, no, it's not because of the tag team. Ampolosaurus getting the hit, but the tag team's going to stop the Fagonax going down. That could be crucial, that could be. That's another tie. That's not going to be enough to kill the Fagonax yet. But that tie will do it. And the Fagonax goes down. Right, coming in next for Marn, we have got the Taurosaurus. Bum, ching, bam, ching, ba, 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 bum, bum. This Taurosaurus definitely hits hard with that stomping hammer. Could stomp the Amplosaurus into the curb. Of course, Amplosaurus is on pretty low health anyway, so any hit from this Taurosaurus will be lethal. Should be lethal. But, you know, Marn struggling to get hits in this match. Another, another hit from Ampelosaurus. A Hydro Cut, a big damage coming Taurosaurus's way, despite that type of advantage. Okay, there we go. Down goes Ampelosaurus. Taurosaurus getting that stomping hammer. Will they get the electric charge off as well? Oh, there's the attack boost. Uh, nope, no electric charge. Okie dokie, coming in next for Jurassic Experts, we've got Omega Eocarcaria. Yeah, Eocarcaria! Now, Omega Armor could be a big factor in this match, provided that uh, Jurassic Experts gets it. But let's not forget how hard this Taurosaurus can hit. Oh, but is Eocarcaria getting the next hit on the board? Jurassic Experts extending their lead. Oh, that's a tie. No heat eruption, though. Oh, that's a big burning dash. And down goes Taurosaurus. Well, Marn tried the crit, but Eocarcaria was having none of that. Ding, ding, bomb. You have to say, a good showing so far from Jurassic Experts. Okie dokie, coming in food for Marn. We got, I was going to say Ampelosaurus, we got uh, a Patasaurus. Um, no secret moves, but we have seen how effective this dinosaur can be. Dun, dun, dun. So let's not count Marn out yet. But they do need to get hits here because this Eocarcaria is looking strong. Okay, that's a good hit. A very tie based dinosaur, this Apatosaurus. It's got the tie bomb, it's got the tie breaker, and it's got the tie attack. Ooh, but Jurassic Experts getting a big shot here. The criminal scumbag not using Flare Sword on Eocarcaria. But instead has Crimson Flame. Boom, 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 boom. Which is probably better because the damage is set and it does go through things like Earth Barrier. 
Oh no! Massive hit from Jurassic Experts. And that's the losing bonus points secured should they lose this match. But it doesn't look like they're going to lose this match. Oh, there's a tie. Oh, there's a heat eruption. That tie is going to cost Man dearly here. And in fact, I think with the Volcano Burst extra effect, I think this could be lethal. Let's have a look. Yeah, that extra bit of damage is going to do it. And it's a bonus point win for Jurassic Experts. And man, licking their wounds a bit there. They, they got the odd hit, but they just couldn't sustain it. They couldn't get going. But well done to Jurassic Experts for a fine victory. Which definitely could shake up this group. Right, on to match number three. Do your slash! Right, in the red corner, representing Prismbo, we got Paris Dinotector. Prismbo still searching for their first win of this tournament, and well, their first ever win. Oh, bit of lag there. That's what happened. But they have had close moments. They were very close at getting the win against Aaron Plays before it ended in a draw. Although they were losing for most of that match, I think. Right, in the blue corner. Representing MEJP10, we have got Auntie Rhinus, MEJP10, 2 from 2 so far. Got the 3-0 win against Arctic Warriors in round 1, before beating Kaijong Cooper in round 2. Will they make it 3 out of 3? Um, we don't have Lightning Dinosaurs in this matchup, I believe, so there will be no terrain advantages. No Blitz types, no nothing. We only got the Dino Tech that the Paris has. Ooh, but it's Ulti Rhinus getting the first hit on the board in its rare Clash of the Grass. It is a rare sight, because there's only like 10 Grass types in this entire tournament. Ooh, but Paris does get the next hit on the board. Good response by Prison Bow. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, but the Ulti Rhinus coming in with that light recovery. That power drain. Oh, the nightmare face that Arctic Warriors sees. Well, they definitely saw it after they got 3 0 by the thing. But the Emerald Garden getting triggered there. Light recovery, healing up. Good hit that from uh, MEJP10. That's a one. Oh, missed the chance for the Emerald Garden there, Prison Bow. A missed opportunity. And that will be all she wrote for Paris. And MEJP10 yet again taking an early lead. Okie dokie, coming in next for Prison Bow, we've got Yang Um, we haven't seen too much of this guy, to be honest. It's mainly been uh, dying, let's just say that. But Prison Bow is going to need it to perform here because if lo and behold the ulti Rhinus kills it, it's going to have type advantage over Lexovasaurus. And well, Prison Bow needs to get back in this match. We've only had one hit so far. Oh, and his MEJP turn yet again get in the hits. Not big hits though, I will say. So a big hit from Prison Bow can definitely turn this match around. But it's about getting that hit. Another hit from MEJP10 and Prison Bow is in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, right now Yang Chungasaurus is really struggling to get hits. To be honest, Prison Bow is struggling to get a hit this entire match. Oh, there we go. Finally a hit on the board and it's a big one. It's going to be a Magma Blaster. That's going to do big damage to the Ulti Rhinus. Ooh, a Flare Sword as well. Is this going to be lethal? Yes, it is. Ulti Rhinus given no chance to heal up. Okie dokie. Coming in next for MEJP10. We've got a Euoplocephalus. Oh, the beautiful Euoplocephalus. 
a dinosaur that you may make an appearance in evolution too. Hint, hint. <laughs> well, I leaked a picture of its tail on the Discord yesterday. Well, let's see what it can do in this matchup, though. Okay, that's a tie. Ooh, but Yanchalosaurus getting another hit on the board. Prism Bow slowly coming back into this contest, reading back that lead that MEJP10 has built. Another hit. Well, Emmy's lead is being cut down to size here. Okay, down goes the Yangchungosaurus, but it did do a lot of work in this match. It practically took out the Ulti Rhinus and has halved the Ed Euoplocephalus' HP. Right, coming in third for Prism Bow, we've got Lexovasaurus. Now, this Lexovasaurus, well, we saw how effective and how lethal that Quake Saber can be. As Aaron plays, can, can, can I admit? I lost the word. Sorry. <laughs> right. Ooh. Went for the crit but didn't get it. Uoplocephalus gets the hit instead. MEJP10. Jeez, that was a lot of damage. Buffed up by the elemental power that hit there. And the earth barrier. I think Emmy wrestling back control in this match. That's a tie. Well, there's the losing bonus point secured for MEJP10. And is this going to secure the bonus point victory? Yes, it is. And it is a bonus point victory for MEJP10 as they make it three out of three. Wow, they're having a really good tournament so far. And Prism Bow's search for their first win ever goes on. Now then, on to the main event of this session. Right then, in the red corner... Representing Keontae, we've got Spinosaurus. Ah, no win types in this matchup, so we don't know what about training advantages. <laughs> right, in the blue corner, representing Kaijon Koopa, we got Penticeratops. Well, Kaijon Koopa suffered their first ever group stage defeat in round two against MEJP10. And got a draw against Aaron Plays in round one. So they are still searching for their first win of the tournament. Will they get it today? Well, they got the uh, type advantage here. But Spinosaurus is certainly a tough customer. And this is the heroic type one. So Kaijon's going to have to watch out for that. But that's a big start. And that's a really good start for Kaijon. The perfect start, in fact. A lightning spear right off the bat, and look at the damage! A strong hit there from Pentaceratops. Ooh, but Spino responds with a shot of his own, but yeah, look at that! <laughs> the difference there is stark! And this Spino needs a crit here if he wants to do real damage, but can't get it, and instead, it's Pentaceratops getting the crit, and that is quick as a wink! Spinosaurus going down. And that is just the start you want if you're Kaijon Cooper. Right, coming in next for Keontae. We have got Tank. Super Tank, that is. Keontae got the win in round two in a very impressive performance, I should say. And this Tank did play a big role in that. Awake the mode on four. And it'll have type advantage over Pentaceratops, which could which will be what Pionte needs to get back in this contest. Because it's been a very strong start from Kaijon so far. Oh, that's another hit on the board! Ooh, but Crystal Crusher has been triggered there, that could come in handy. Okay, don't need the Crystal Crusher, because they get the hit anyway. Good hit. Oh, hello, we've got an Earth Barrier. That'll definitely help Keontae. And he's still got the Awake the Mode, but ideally, you want to save it for 
You want the cephalus that'll come, that could come in next. Oh, another hit from Kionte. Right, that's thrice. So that's one, two, three, four hits to two. Actually, four hits to three. And is that Pentaceratops down? Yes, it is. Well, Keonti roaring back into this match and now has practically even things up. Right, coming in next for Kaijon, we've got Europlocephalus. Uh, not much to say. But Kaijon's going to have to be careful of the Awaken mode here because Tank will be awakened soon and it has the Earth Barrier as well protecting her. So Kaijon will need to get rid of that. But just can't get a hit. And that's a massive hit from Keonti incoming. It's a spike arrows. And things are starting to get spiky again for Kaijon. And it's awakening time. And the momentum you have to say right now is with Keonti. Can they capitalize? Oh, they can! Massive hit from Tank. Oh, actually, I was kind of underwhelming. But what isn't underwhelming is that Keonti has taken the lead. Okay, well, Kaijon has got rid of the Earth Barrier, finally. <laughs> and, well, they finally got a hit. It's been a while since they had one of those. It's been all Keonti for the past few hits. But the Waplocephalus is getting rid of this tank and restoring Kaijon's lead. Right, coming in food for Keonde, we've got a T-Rex. Now, this T-Rex does have the death fire. That could be a big factor in this match. But Kaijon does have Super Torvasaurus waiting in the wings. So it's still all to play for in this main event. That's a tie, and that should be curtains for you, Otocephalus. I don't think it's revival type, and it's not. Right, coming in third for Kaijon Cooper, we got Torvosaurus, Super Torvosaurus. Could the Awaken mode get Kaijon their first win of the tournament, or is Keonte gonna get? Gonna make it two out of three with the death fire. We're all soon gonna find out. Or maybe one of them will just get grand normal hits and win anyway. Or maybe it'll be a draw. You just never know. Oh, I don't wanna get hit by that crit. But that's a big but the Torvosaurus crits is no joke either. That's a firebomb. That's probably gonna half the T-Rex's health. And it does. No death fire triggered either, which could be a big problem for Keonde. Because I'm not sure this T Rex can tank another hit. Okay, gets the Magma Blaster off. Keonde not beaten yet. Really back and forth this main event. And look at that! Both our combatants guaranteed at least a losing bonus point. But both want so much more. Okay, Kaijon getting the next hit. No death fire, and it's awakening time. Oh, it could all come down to this. This win or bust for Kaijon. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, he gets it. That's going to do it. This firebomb is going to do it for Kaijon Cooper. And they're going to get their first victory of the tournament. But it's not all lost for Keontae because they will get the losing bonus point. But a big result for Kaijon Cooper finally getting off the, the mark in this tournament. Okie dokie. That was a good main event actually, wasn't it? Right, let's have a look at the table and we can end this session. Well, that is how Group E looks, ladies and gentlemen. MEJP10, 3 out of 3 so far on 12 points, which is the highest points total that anyone has got so far. Which is absolutely insane at this stage of the tournament. And dare I say it, probably... They're probably going to go through with that. Even if they were to lose the next four matches. I think MEJP10 is pretty much assured to go through. Then we have Jurassic Experts in second place above Marn by the uh, 
virtue of the head-to-head. Man in third place. Then we have Kaijon Cooper and Keontae level on points at five. But I put Kaijon above Keontae because they do have a uh, better win-loss ratio because they did get the draw. Then we have Arctic Warriors finally getting off the mark in this tournament on three points. Above Aaron Plays by virtue of the fact that they beat them. And then we have Aaron Plays on three points. And poor old Prism Bow stuck at the bottom with one. But they're not cut adrift of the top four because, you know, there is still only four points separating them and these two. So they're still all to play for. But yep, that's going to end this session here. So I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, ta-ta. Mm -hmm.